My name is Anthony Moore. I'm originally from Philly. Just moved here to New York. I just moved here. I like New York so far, but it's too damn expensive. Like, I, like moving to New York, it made me realize I could afford to have a baby back home. Like, I just been wasting all my good pullout years for nothing. <laughs> could have been leaving it right inside of my girl, man. Like, what I'm trying to do, ser like seriously, what, <laughs> what I'm trying to do right now I'm trying to commit, I'm trying to convince more of my friends to move to New York because I feel like if enough black people move into my Jewish community, maybe they can help me lower the property value around here. Like, we got to join together to start some reverse gentrification, man. It's either that or ease crack back into the community. Like, I'm trying to tear New York apart to live more affordable, man. That's why you see, like, the cost of living up here is changing everybody's habits and lifestyles. That's why everybody becoming hipsters and vegans. Because you don't just start off not eating meat, eggs, and cheese. You start off by not being able to afford it. Like, <laughs> like it's like one month you got to make a decision like, damn, do I get this chicken cutlet or do I want gas and lights around here, man? Seriously, it's crazy. Man, I'm at a good point, though, man. I'm at a good point in life. I just started a new job. Yeah, I had to quit my last job, man. I had to quit my last job. I'm a one-to-one -one worker, so I worked at a high school with kids that have, like, behavioral health problems and mental challenges. And, man, that shit was scary, because, <laughs> first of all, most of these kids look older than me. Like, they had tattoos and full facial hair and bullet wounds and... <laughs> Yeah, and, and the boys, they look just as scary, like... <laughs> like, look. I'm telling you, man, it's, it's crazy out here, like... Like, look. High school kids already don't respect the 30. They already don't, like, they don't respect people. So imagine when I show up to work looking like one of them, like... I was showing up to work getting bullied into doing their assignments, and... I would have second thoughts about this job because they'd be like, all right, on one hand, I get paid this Friday, but on the other hand, I got a science project due now. Like, I got to study these covalent bonds when I get off of work, man. And I tell my friends all the time, I would rather walk past a group of killers before I walk past a group of these teenagers with an iPhone out because at least with the group of killers, you know to protect yourself. But with these kids out here, you don't know shit is about to happen until you walk by and hear World Star, and now I'm getting knocked out on the latest Vine compilation. Like, I'm on the ground, like, man, we were just friends six seconds ago. These little bastards are evil. <laughs> man? Scary out here. Scary, man. I don't know, man, but other than that. Other than work though, man, I, I just finished school, just graduated. Just finished, graduated St. Joe's University. Yeah. And I'm glad I'm done because, like, it was a struggle for me being black at a predominantly white school. Because I mean, like, damn, they got me using words like predominantly and just like the kind of things I had to deal with was ridiculous. Like, in most of my classes, I was usually the only black person. So my professors thought this made me a spokesperson for all black people. And they would just ask random questions to get some black input. Like, true story, I'm in class one day paying attention, taking notes. All I hear is, Anthony, would you care to explain to the class how black people feel about slavery and reparations? I had to snap on her like, look, this is a math class. Like, we don't even cover those topics in here. I'm like, you asked Rosemary to solve for X, you asked me about Malcolm X, this is ridiculous, man. And it wouldn't even just be the professors. It would be the textbooks too, like the word problems in math class. They would have like different names, like different backgrounds and ethnicities to try to make everybody feel equal. Word problem would start off like, so if Bob, Rashid, Javier, and Nancy went to the store, like right there you know something is wrong. <laughs> Nobody named Bob shops at the same place as somebody named Rashid. Like, <laughs> the problem just started and I'm already confused, like well damn. Are we in Whole Foods or a bodega? Like, um, where is this taking place at, man? But it's like at school, I was so used to being around white people, I was starting to think like I was white. 
Like when I saw a black person on campus I didn't recognize, I would get all nervous. Like, what the hell is he doing here? Like, <laughs> like for real, I saw somebody I didn't recognize once. I had to call campus security. I got on the phone like, hello, public safety. Yes, it's an unidentified black male. He's loitering at a library. I need you to send help quick. Man, they showed up and arrested me. I'm like, man, I just got off the phone with y'all, man. It's ridiculous. It's crazy, man. But I don't know, like school, it opened me up to a lot of diversity, man. It opened me up to a lot, like, now I got white friends, and now I also have gay friends. And I'm gonna tell y'all something. If y'all don't have some gay friends already, you need to get you some because gay people are the most efficient people in the world right now. Like, I'm telling you, they get parades once a month. They get laws passed in a timely fashion. They almost got Chick-fil-A open on Sundays. Like, <laughs> I was with them on that one, man, that lemonade. <laughs> like, look, it's two groups of people you gotta get in good with. It's two groups of people that run the world. The first group of gay people, the second group of Jewish people. So if I ever get in legal trouble, my lawyer is gonna be the gayest Jew I could find. Like, you gonna come in the courtroom with a nice rainbow yarmulke, tell her Versace suit, just walking on happy and energetic, like, well, shalom, your honor. Like, um, like, this is my client. My name is Devontae Bernstein. Like, oh. Uh, you got Devontae bursting on us, man. <laughs> Damn. But, hey. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, I like y'all, man. I like y'all. All right. Well, before I got out of here, I feel like I could open up and share with y'all, man, what's going on with my life. So, I'm having relationship problems right now. Yeah, not, not, not with my girl, but I got two different barbers, and I'm not sure, like, all right, seriously, like, this is, this is serious. How I got in this situation, my original barber got locked up, so at first I'm sending him letters with pictures of me growing out my hair, you know, to let him know I'm out here holding him down like I'm supposed to. But... As the weeks and months started to go by, I started feeling vulnerable, so I, I got needs. So I started seeing somebody else. And now that he just got out, I'm not really sure what to do because I care about them both, but I haven't figured out the right way how to tell them about each other, man. It's just so messed up because every time I go into the barbershop, he questioning me like he my man, asking me, where the hell you been? Who keep leaving these marks around your neck? And then when my barber not there, the other barbers try to seduce me into a haircut. Like, come on, man, just lay down. He don't care about you like that. If he did, he wouldn't leave you around us. Now I got to defend myself. Like, I mean, you seem nice and all, but we just met, you know? Then my barber walk in on us. I got the cape around my neck. Like, no, Earl, it's not what it looks like. Uh. But I'm Anthony Murray, y'all.